Hi there, my name is Phil and I'm the developer of Gmog, the Game Maker Object Creator. If you have no idea what it is, there's a link or a, a, a YouTube card uh, for it and also a link in the description. It basically does what it says, it creates objects for the Game Maker engine. So this video is more from a perspective of development, uh, if you're interested in how it actually creates new objects. And actually it's pretty simple, so I hope this video won't take too long. All right, let's uh, create a new, uh, a new project here in, in GameMaker. And this is an empty project, which I just called Gmog Test Project. Uh, there will I create just, just a couple of objects, uh, just so that we see how this gets stored uh, in the GameMaker uh, XML file. We'll get to this. So I make a new object, let's call it Vanilla Object 1. And create another object, let's call this Vanilla OBJ 2. And we want to drive uh, these objects via scripts. So I create a new group. Let's call this vanilla group or, or just vanilla group. <laughs> My typing's all messed up. And a new script, which I will call vanilla script one. And it just says, hello world. Um, if A is greater than two, B is true or whatever. So just that something is in there. Okay, so I create as you usually do with GameMaker, you just make a new object and uh, create, create a new event and hook this event up either to a piece of code or a drag and drop option, uh, action, or as in my case, a new script like this one in the Vanaya group we just created. Let's say this is our create script and it also runs uh, when we have a step event, where it is, there is it. There is my step event and it also runs this one. It's, yeah, it's just for demonstration sake. Now I save this one and let's have a look at the folder where this is stored. Whoop. Here we go. So here we have our GMOC, our Gmog test project, and it's a game maker file. So in principle, if you create a new file uh, in ga inside game maker, new game maker project, it's just uh, a file structure with an RTF file. The RTF file is just a document. If you have here your game information, oh, anything you write in here gets stored as RTF. That's not that's interesting, but just for completion's sake, if I open this one here with my LibreOffice writer, here we are. You can see here a very faint a smiley face. Let's make this a bit bigger just to, yeah, so that you can see it. So yeah, it's just a text file. Let's save it as RTF. And the other thing here is, which is the interesting part, is a GMX file and some folders. The GMX file, this one here is just one kilobyte. So where's all the data? <laughs> and uh, let's open th uh, this file, the, the GMX file up in a notepad. I use notepad++, but you can also use it in the Windows notepad. Just drag and drop. And I changed the language to XML that we have nice colored markup. And there it is. It's nothing more than just a plain XML file, which gets read by the GameMaker IDE to populate your project uh, uh, tree with all the stuff you have. So it just says here, uh, it got a bunch of scripts, which has a group, so scripts in the vanilla group, and there's just this one script in here. This one here, uh, all the paths uh, inside uh, uh, this XML actually are local paths that uh, relate to this folder structure. So if we go to scripts, of course, we will find our vanilla group. And interestingly, the script itself is not in the group. For some reason, um, if you have in your, there we are, in your game maker IDE, a bunch of, of groups. And if there's just, just some kind of script in there, um, all the groups, no matter how nested they are, I just put it here, just if you're interested, no matter how nested they are, um, they just here appear uh, outside of, of, of the group, just inside the scripts folder and they're in effect, yeah, empty. And everything else where there's actually stored uh, is stored here in this XML file in the 
project.gmx. So just if you're interested in, in modifying and playing around with this, if, if you have here a folder structure, it gets completely ignored unless you also have it in here. So you can see uh, as soon as I save anything here, uh, this XML file gets updated and it also says me here where my objects are and of course where the GML files are. GML files themselves, let's open this vanilla script we created before, again, is just a simple text file. It even is encoded in ANSI, so if you have fancy characters, you might want to encode it in UTF-8, but that's beside the point. The point is, it's just plain text. You can edit and modify yourself with a text editor. So this was the, uh, the project uh, XML file. And now here, if we uh, access our objects directory, there are two GMX files in there. And these GMX files themselves are, again, just plain, plain, well, yeah, plain uh, XML files. But uh, the objects here have a little bit more info uh, than, than just uh, a project by itself. Um, for example, we have here an event type three. What's event type number three? Well, we don't know, what, but what's event type number one? We also don't know. You have to do a little bit of, of uh, messing around with it. And it turns out event type zero is the create event, event type three is the step event, and so on and so on. There are different different kinds of events. Just if you want to find out what event, uh, what event type a certain event is, yeah, let's let's just try it out. This is how I made it. I made a new event and said, yeah, what's what's the number for a draw event? I just create a draw event and put something in there. Let's say, yeah, whatever action, like move to contact in direction zero, whatever. Save this one. Uh, Notepad++ says, tells me that this file has been modified. Let's re reload this, this file. And we have here event type eight. So, okay, now we know this event number eight is the draw event. And yeah, that's pretty much, that's all you need to know. If you want to create your own objects, you just have to create this kind of XML file yourself. And let's just, I copy this and create a new text file here. And I call it uh, manual obj2. And now this is important, what follows dot object dot gmx. Get a warning that this is not a proper text file. Of course it's not. If I paste this here, and say the language is an XML. And let's say event type, let's call this eight. And this one should just have a draw event, number eight, that executes a script. And this one is vanilla script one. So the other events I don't need, I delete this and save it. So this should be inside our project. But if I reload our project, it probably won't be there. And why not? Yeah, we get here an error that we have an error in the script in, in this ugly little script. So let's just make this a comment. So where is this new object? It doesn't show up there. Well, of course, uh, yeah, let's reload these. You also have uh, to tell um, GameMaker in its uh, root project file, the GMX file, that there is a new object or a new script or a new anything. So I just duplicate this one. And let's, how did we call it? Manual object two dot object. So it's objects, manual obj2. If I save this now and reopen the file in game maker, there we have a new manual object. And it has just, as I said before, the draw event, which executes this vanilla script. And this is basically it. This is how you create objects inside of game maker because it's just um yeah messing around with xml files um and you have of, of course you have to know uh what kind of tags you you need and how those are structured and so on and so forth and what actually the ide of game maker expects uh, from these kind of gmx files yeah i just did a little bit of back and forth as you just saw basically i just manually changed values here and and exported stuff, saved it, imported, it had some, some kind of crashes, especially if you reference a script file that doesn't exist. GameMaker really doesn't like this, so I just had to make sure that anything I make 
like yeah my game maker object creator any tool that i create just make sure that everything that it creates itself just adheres to this kind of structure from game maker so how did i do this um we'll come back in a bit after i have had my coffee <sighs> welcome back so how did i do this uh with what programming language uh, and, and IDE. How did I tell uh, uh, the computer to make some XML files and just to organize them that uh, GameMaker will create them? I used Pure Basic. Probably you've never heard of it. I, it was my first, the first programming language I bought, which was, I think, 39 euros back then, I think. And it's, it's really dear to me because this is the first, uh, basic was the first language, uh, my first programming language I was introduced to uh, on the Commodore 64. It's been a while. Yeah. So let's have a look at Pure Basic and what Gmok looks like in Pure Basic. So this is a Pure Basic project, which is comprised of, of the main routines and this little window here. If I start my Game Maker Object Creator now, side by side, you can see, yeah, this is basically the layout. So you can here browse for your game maker object file. There we are, Gmok test project. And yeah, let's create a new Gmok, a new object with, with this tool, it's just called Gmok object. And it makes scripts for create step and draw events, create object. The log says it's fine, exit. And if we open our game maker project here, of course, there we have it, a new object, which is wired up to these scripts. So basically my program, my tool just creates new text files, as you can see here. And yeah, links them uh, inside this GMX file. And of course, because I want to make sure that I don't break anything with my tool, it also creates a backup file. Yeah, anyway, let's let's get back to quick basic how this happens. So if you set your options here, you just uh, yeah have some flags and depending on which kind of, of those flags are set and you hit create object, it runs through a number of procedures. These procedures, um, this code right here, it just evolved over the years. It's not, the, you can see it's, it's from 2014 to 2016 already. It's not the prettiest code, not the best structured code, yeah, by far not, but it's small. It's how long is it? It's I think 1300 lines of code with a lot, lots of white space sometimes. So yeah, it's, it's not huge. It's, I, I still know what it does and how to maintain it. So if we look at the procedures, which are also, yeah, pretty randomly placed in here, like we have our here, our file procedures and script procedures. Actually, uh, the one that's important here is create GM object. So uh, basically it just creates a new XML and I use the expat XML uh, uh, library. Let's have a look here at the pure basic help file. And where does it say it? XML index. Yeah, it's, it's the expat XML parser. So I have a number of functions here to, where I can just manipulate uh, various uh, tags and uh, inside uh, the XML file. So it's not that I edit uh, the text file. I parse it first as, GML, uh, as XML file and then work with it. So I'm not going in too much into detail uh, about this, but let's just have a look at what it does. So inside the main node, it looks for a sprite name and if it's uh, and sets it to undefined and solid and, and uh, visible is off and the depth is zero and it's not persistent. So uh, this is, it just creates a new object with all uh, the, the standard physics stuff. Usually since I didn't make it for physics objects, I just use here uh, the default values when you create a new object in, in, in uh, Game Maker. And yeah, so, so it does just the boiler, boilerplate stuff. And now for, for some, uh, for the actual objects, um, yeah, it, it creates a new object prefix. If you set a prefix here in Gmok, 
which you can, which is in my case, it's always obj underscore or for a script, it's uh, ser underscore. So it uses a prefix, a new object name and the new object extension and also looks for the save path. Yeah, and it does a lot with uh, a saving where it checks whether there's already a file that exists or there's already an entry with its name, with this object name, so that you just just don't override anything you have. I'm, I'm really cautious with this, so I made, made it triple sure <laughs> that you don't accidentally override anything you've already had because uh, this one just creates a new XML file. Complete, it, it, as I said before, it doesn't modify the file so much as it just reads it all in. The whole XML is still kept in its structure inside uh, Gmock. Then it just changes or, or exchanges or adds new objects there. And then it writes a completely new XML file. And because it doesn't look like a new XML file and hopefully, which is the intention, it doesn't, a game maker doesn't know that this is a new XML file. But yeah, as a programmer, I know since, since I'm doing a completely new XML file, everything has to be in order and, and, and every tag has to be escaped. And, so on that it's it produces a legal xml file and this is why i really rely on the expat xml parser because it's pretty solid yeah and, and just the rest again as i said it, this one just creates a new uh, a new xml file and new script files and for the script files um as as i said in the other video uh, you can use your own script files uh, your own script file templates, uh, which which have to be a certain name. And if they are in the Gmock folder, it will use these files. And if they are not present, there are some hard-coded uh, script files in there, which I will just uh, run you through. Uh, where do we have them? File procedures, script procedures. They are create script file. And you can see here, it's, it creates just, this is just more or less plain text of the GML script that gets created. and. If there already uh, exists a template file, it will skip this one. So um, any if, if there's any anything wrong with my templates, you just as long as you have your own templates which get created automatically the first time you run Gmock, um, yeah, you you can pretty much override what I've here because sometimes I've I've made typos with in earlier versions and stuff. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. So uh, to sum it up. Uh, Gmock is nothing more than a tool that creates, that reads XML files, changes bits where necessary and writes new XML files into the folder structure and, uh, and yeah, general uh, structure, XML structure that uh, the game maker IDE expects from a file. So to the game maker studio, it looks like it saved the file itself, but in actuality, I just changed the XML file. Yeah, and that's basically it. So nothing magic here. It's pretty, pretty boring box standard tool coding. But yeah, to me, it's always nice. I always get a nice and fuzzy feeling if I code a tool and it really works and it really saves me some time. And since this one has been in development on and off for over two years and I just added bits here and there. Yeah, it's it's pretty solid and I'm pretty happy. And especially with game jams, it saves me a lot of time. Anyways, again, this has been more or less advertising for Gmock than actually explaining how it works. I, well, I hope it wasn't that bad. But yeah, again, uh, thank you for watching and enjoy some coffee. And uh, thanks for your interest in Gmock. Cheers. new on Twitter. Let's just get an email. Oh, my blog turned two. My, my, my Tumblr. Why am I still recording this?